going on everyone? This is John, the Wolf of Ecom. In this video, I wanna share with you my top tips on what to do if you're struggling with your e-commerce business or really any business in general. And I'm saying this from years of experience being self-employed and running my own businesses since uh, just about 2011 was when I first opened my first business, which was a brick and mortar gym that I still own to this day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. And don't forget, if you get something from this video, whether it be the inspiration motivation side of things or a strategy, a tactic, or something you want to implement for yourself, your own business, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below if you have anything of any questions or anything else you want to add. So the first thing is regardless of the business you're in, being in a great state is super important, okay? The main reason why is not just because of your mental clarity and the fact that you're going to feel better, right? But most importantly is it comes down to your decision making and the energy that you attract or repel when it comes to uh, bringing in new business and new opportunities, right? So this is actually a shirt from a personal development program I did years ago. Michael Burnoff is one of the best uh, personal development coaches I've worked with myself. I've been to his events, I've been to his high level programs, and the, what he's taught me in those events has really helped me become a calmer, happier, more centered, and grounded human being. And, and I've become an emo in charge of managing my own emotions, that along with jujitsu. So if you're not doing some kind of exercise for yourself, that's a large part, that's gonna have a massive impact on what actually happens and occurs in the rest of your life, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm a little biased coming from the fitness industry, but Nonetheless, it is absolutely true. What I find is when you're not exercising is that you, it's, you're you more likely to become stuck in your ways, stuck in your patterns, stuck in your habits. And when it comes to uh, having success in any kind of business, uh, having so, uh, a good state of energy, a good state of being is going to have a positive impact on how you work with your customers, how you work with your team, how you function as an individual, as a leader, as the actual doer of the business. Whatever kind of business you're in, especially in e-commerce, where you're you're behind a computer most of the time, you're you're uh, very connected to technology. I find that being too connected to technology can actually make you become very disconnected from what actually matters. And I find that when people become too connected to technology, that they actually have a hard time connecting with others and connecting with themselves, right? And when you balance yourself in a way that you can form at an optimal level, then everything else will work better. Imagine like your favorite star athlete, uh, not taking care of themselves, eating poor, not sleeping. They may be the most talented person for whatever that role is, whether they're a, a quarterback for your favorite NFL team or a soccer player or a footballer, as many of you will call it. If they are a lesser version of themselves, they're not going to fully express their potential on the field in whatever their sport is. Same thing for you in business, okay? So getting yourself into a great state by working on yourself, by uh, reading, by journaling, by doing all those uh, self-care things, but also exercising, check out jujitsu on bias as anything. Um, but th these will have a massive impact on everything else I can promise you. The second thing is, regardless of what business you're in, but especially e-commerce, is you need to not necessarily master every every component of the business itself. You don't need to be a master of every uh, skill set within the business, but you need an understanding of how things work and what doesn't work, right? So what I mean by that, for example, in e-commerce, you need to uh, understand what a good product is. You need to understand what a good landing page is that gets a, a high conversion rate. You need to understand how to do copywriting that speaks to your audience. And you also need to understand what good creatives are and then the data behind all those to make good decisions. Now, you don't need to be the person that designs the creators. You don't need to be the person that writes a copy, but you need to understand it and have an experience on, on some level so you can make sure that a true expert, when you bring them in in-house or whether you hire this out, is doing what they say they're gonna do. And you're gonna find as you grow and you develop any kind of business, you're gonna shift from being the service provider per se yourself to the leader, the coach, the influence with in your your team right because you could have a bunch of talented people underneath of you doing your your page designs doing your website builds doing your copywriting doing your creatives finding your products that's what you should aim for but the thing is 
if you don't understand how those things function and operate, you're not gonna be able to give people the feedback they need to perform at their best and to make the best decisions, right? A lot of times people are afraid of making decisions for themselves. So your job as a leader, as, as the entrepreneur in any business, especially e-commerce, is you're going to need to be bold and confident in those areas where maybe they, they don't have full confidence to make decisions for themselves, right? You may find someone that knows great creatives, but they might get in their head about all the different creatives they make for a specific product and then they can't decide which one they should do, right? So having that base level of experience of not necessarily doing one thing at a high level, right? It's great obviously if you come from one of these backgrounds of maybe web design or video editing or graphics or whatever it may be, but understanding it enough so you can give feedback and guidance along the way so people can do those things better. So this brings me to my next point, which is you absolutely have to develop those skill sets uh, to some level, like I said. Because if you are incompetent in certain areas of your business, you're not going to understand how that fits within the grand scheme of things, right? If let's say you're strong with video editing and you're strong with page design, but you have no idea what kind of products work or you don't understand how to read the data to make decisions on if the what's broken in the funnel and the sequence of the product itself, you're going to have a really hard time, like I said, articulating the solution to your team and or understanding how to solve the problem for your Yourself. And I can promise you a lot of times you may bring on a rock star here or there that can fill those gaps for you. But you know, you need to look at, okay, what am I naturally good at? What are my natural skill sets? And then what are the things I need to develop an understanding of, not a mastery of per se. And this will make a massive difference in regardless of the type of business you're in, but especially in e-commerce where there's some very technical parts of this business. Now this ties into a, a major point too, which is understanding your own strengths and your own weaknesses. So let me give you an example. I do e-commerce. I have a local brick and mortar gym and I do coaching as well, coaching and consulting. And what I know about myself after years, I'm in my early 30s, is that I am naturally more gifted when it comes to teaching, educating, guiding, inspiring, motivating than I am when it comes to data analysis or mastery of, uh, let's say, video editing, right? But the thing is, I understand those, those weak points, those less natural uh, parts of my business, of my responsibilities at, at a level high enough where I can help other people that are better at those things or more motivated to do those things, you could even say, than I would, right? So I understand what needs to be done for customer service, but A, it's not natural for me, okay? And B, uh, I, I understand it well enough where I can give that real world and responsibility and guidance with it to the right person. Like I have someone that maintains the customer service for all of our e-commerce stores. So I'm not actually in there answering emails and working through disputes and returns and all these other pieces. But what I can do is I can give that person perspective, guidance, and structure, and how to perform at a high level inside of that. When, when they're bringing their years of experience of handling customer service from other jobs that they've had, for example. And this is something super important. So the next thing I wanna point out is that you need to understand what things are essential to develop, okay? And there's a few things that you will need regardless of your natural or unnatural skill sets you were gifted with or had developed over the years. The first one is going to be coaching and teaching. If you do not know how to coach, how to educate, how to guide people, you're going to find yourself limited. You're not gonna grow. Your business is gonna get stuck somewhere along the way. You might be able to drive things. Let's say your, your natural skill set is sales, okay? Which is another one of the essential skill sets to have. Let's say that's natural to you and that's all you focus on. You may make a lot of uh, sales and you'll hit a certain, let's say you get up to 30, 40, 50K a month in your business. But if, you're, if you don't understand and don't have the desire to develop or coach other people, and how to do customer service or how to focus on, you know, generating more business, for example, like attracting more opportunities, you're going to find yourself hitting a ceiling. You're going to be chasing customers versus returning, retaining them. All these things are going to come up. So you have to really become a master of teaching because if you could te teach and develop people to do the essentials of any business, you can make any, pretty much any business successful for the most part, right? If you can develop people, coach them, guide them, educate them, and hold 
hold them accountable to doing the things they say they're gonna do, even if they're better at those things than you, having that guidance, that perspective, that leadership will have a profound effect. The next thing that is essential is understanding how to attract new people, right? This, this is your marketing in some extent. Remember, you don't need to be the master of creative design or video ads or things like that, but if you understand the principles and develop that, that piece and that skill set within yourself, you can perform it at some level because you are always gonna be the best promoter of your business, okay? But also you're gonna be able to guide, advise, influence your team to do what they do best with creative design, with copywriting, with uh, you know inquiry follow-up for people that are interested in your product or your service. It's gonna make a massive difference. So I can promise you this is the second most important skill set uh, if you're going to be successful, okay? The third is always going to be how to sell. Like I just said, you're going to be the best promoter. No one's gonna promote your business like you will, okay? So you have to understand how to sell, whether that's you selling a service, right, directly, like a coaching, consulting business, or an e-commerce, for example, where you're selling products. You need to understand the buyer psychology and how to tap into that to get people's attention, awareness, and educate them to make a good decision in buying your product, okay? If you don't have this skill set, you are absolutely gonna struggle. You may be good at you know, uh, coaching and guiding your team, let's say developing them, and then when it goes to actually closing deals, if you're not able to produce you are going to absolutely going to run into trouble, okay? You know, Mark Cuban, one of the most successful entrepreneurs of our time, uh, has said multiple times that sales cures all, right? Like sales will solve most problems, at least in the short term. Long-term growth of any business is obviously going to depend on like the core values, the systems, the structure, the leadership, the everything in between, right? But to get the ball rolling, to to get the fire going, and to keep it going, you need to constantly be selling. And, and there's so many levels to this, right? This is actually one of the first places I started when I first opened my gym. Before I actually had the gym, I was learning how to sell in the trenches, face to face with people. I actually have, uh, let's say, 10 plus years of face-to-face -face sales experience at this point. And I know I, with that confidence I have from my sales skills, I believe I can go into pretty much any niche, any industry, any business, and at least generate new business, sell, communicate, get, get my value proposition across. And that's a skill set you need to absolutely have, even if it's not your strength. The last important skill that you must develop is going to be how to move the needle, right? How to understand the problem at hand and then what are the levers, actions, uh, strategies and tactics that will move things forward, right? And what, what do you need to focus on uh, as a team and as an individual. When you understand that, like I said before in this video, you don't need to be the one necessarily doing the thing itself or mastering the thing. Great example with e-commerce is always going to be uh, video ads, right? Most people do not need to know how to do video ads, how to do editing effects, but you do absolutely need to understand how to get someone to do it that is good at it the way you need it done. Okay, and understanding if that is the thing that's going to, let's say, double your click through rate, which will theoretically cut your cost per ad to cart, your cost per checkout, and your cost per purchase in half, right? Like that's a example of understanding what moves the needle. Or if you look at your data set in e-commerce, you look at your funnel and you see the drop off is not at click through rate. Let's say you have a really high click through rate. You're getting a lot of people that see your ad to click and then go to the page, but no one's adding it to the cart. Then the next thing you're gonna be thinking of is, what do I need to change about the ad copy, about the offer, maybe the product itself and how I'm presenting it on that product page uh, a, am I going to be the one to do that? Or B, um, who do I need to get to do that? And, and okay, understanding that, is that going to move the needle? Is that really the drop off? Or is it, let's say, you know, we're still getting close to our target cost per purchase. So maybe that will move the needle a little bit, but is that what's going to tip things over to where we're really crushing it? Okay, so understanding what to focus on and, and that's going to drive and shift things the most is super important. You want to think of this like, leverage okay uh here's an example let's say you get a flat tire right you could probably get like 10 people to stand on the side of the car all come down and try to pull the car up at once and i'm sure if you have enough people and they're strong enough and the car is not super heavy you could probably lift the car at least a little bit but why not just get a jack put the jack underneath the car crank the jack and then that'll give you the lift you need and it's 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 a smaller 
uh, more efficient way of creating leverage. That's how you wanna think about your business. Like it's a car that gets a flat tire every now and then, and sometimes you need to figure out what's going to get that car up with the least amount of effort at the most efficient rate possible. And that's gonna give you the best opportunity to win, okay? And the last thing I wanna share is that you can always pivot. You know, a lot of people get into e-commerce thinking it's the end all be all, but little do they realize is, let's say they have some success along the way, but they always struggle in the long term. Maybe it's not what you actually want, but you can take those skill sets you develop. Maybe now that you understand how to read data or that you how to how understand how to funnel operates or you understand buyer psychology, maybe you can make a pivot into affiliate marketing or uh, consulting or you can move into your own brand if you know, partnering with someone that handles your weak spots, right? Or maybe you wanna move into an agency. A lot of people do this because they just can't cut it when it comes to e-commerce. Like I know plenty of people that were great at figuring out, let's say, funnel optimization side of things, what kind of creatives work, but they can never really find with consistency products that people actually wanted. So by coming in as an agency in that format, I'm not saying you have to do this, but it could make the difference for you. Maybe they find people that have great products and they apply those other pieces of the of the puzzle, right? With the conversion rate optimization, with the creative structure, with uh, you know the page design, whatever it is, and they plug that into the person that has a solid product, and then things work like gangbusters. This is not unheard of. This happens all the time. So I know I gave you a lot of tips, a lot of ideas here, but one of my one of my closest members actually asked for some more mindset perspective videos. And I enjoy talking about these topics. I, like I said, I love teaching people. And when I'm training jujitsu, you know, usually three to five times a week, I'm addicted to it. Uh, I, I love giving feedback when I can, when I feel like I can add value. And that's why, that's a lot of reason why I do these YouTube videos. It's always fun to do the technical side too, or the hacks and tricks with Facebook. I love doing that. But I really have a passion for sharing knowledge, experience, and, and giving that coaching guide guidance and teaching where I can. And I believe this is a, a large part that most people don't talk about. They're worried about like top 10 products you should sell in October. And that's, don't do those videos there. Yeah, it's silly. So I hope this helped give you something to take away, to apply. Maybe you realize that you're naturally good at teaching and you need to just find people that are great at the things that you're weaker in. And you need to apply that teaching and coaching and guiding skill set to get the most from them. Or maybe you are the editor, you're the video editor and you just need to uh, learn how to develop people to do that and replace yourself so you can focus on developing with your sales sales skills or your promotion skills, whatever it may be. Either way, uh, if you got something from this video, please like, subscribe, and if you haven't already, check out my free guides below this video. A lot of great resources there, whether you're in e-commerce or drop shipping or affiliate marketing, there's absolutely something that can help you there if you're running ads in general. And without further ado, make sure to join my free Facebook group as well below this video. I share a lot of great information almost on a daily basis in there on what is and isn't working when it comes to working around the bans, restrictions, and shutdowns by Facebook. Nonetheless, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll look forward to it then.